So I'd like to show you how you can use the product CSV importer to update all of your products in GroovePacker. And this is really handy if you need to change inventory for all your items or add bin locations or modify any of those things. So you can start out with a CSV file that you export from your shopping cart or an order manager. But if you don't have a file to work from and all your products are in GroovePacker, it's also possible to use our backup exporter and create your start file and then modify and import that. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Uh, we're just going to go to the backup and then we'll click on download backup. Anytime you're updating products using a CSV, please take a second to download a backup of your products database using this backup exporter. It only takes a moment and it ensures that you can restore your product data if needed. All right, and when that downloads, it'll take um, probably about a minute or so. Uh, it'll give you a zip file, and when you open that file up, you'll see that inside you have several different CSV files. This products one is the only one that you'll need to worry about. So I have that open here. You can see the name, SKU, barcode, and uh, the common ones are up towards the front, but then you have like secondary and tertiary barcode and SKU later on in the file, and a few other things that you might want to change. One of those is uh, special instructions for packing that particular item, so you can edit those. So now we'll select that file in GroovePacker, uh, just like you'd select any CSV file, and I'll show you how to map it and import. So we're going to go to the settings section, and then we'll use our a CSV store. You'll click on CSV there, and you'll be able to choose your file from the product import. You'll want to make sure that there's no map selected. If you already have a map selected, you can clear that. Okay, once that's clear, I can click either edit or import. Both of them are going to open up the mapping window so that we can map the file. So the, uh, the default from row is 2. That just means that it will skip this row that usually has headers there. If you don't have headers on that first row, then you'll want to change that to 1. These settings are normally all right. You don't usually have to change those this is where we can give this a name. So let's say we're going to just update inventory with this file. So we'll call this inventory update. Okay, and then depending on whether you're importing new products or updating existing products, you'll choose one of these options. All these products already exist in GroovePacker and we're just going to be updating one or more of the fields, so we'll choose the second option. If some of the products were new in this import and we wanted to create those, then we would choose the third option. The first option is for when you're adding new products only, you're not updating anything. So the only things that we really need to map if we're going to be updating the inventory are going to be the SKU, which is what GroovePacker uses to recognize the items, and then the available quantity. So in this case, they're all zero, but we can select it here as inventory count. And that's it. This is actually ready to go. It'll look for this SKU and it will overwrite whatever inventory it finds in GroovePacker with this incoming value. If I wanted to also update a secondary barcode, let's say that this was my secondary barcode uh, column, I would just choose secondary barcode from there and it would automatically overwrite whatever was in GroovePacker in the secondary barcode column with this. If you want to unmap a field, you can just click the X there and it will remove it. When you have everything the way that you want it, you click Import. It'll show you the status there, and then it will give you a message letting you know how many were updated and if anything new was created. In this case, it should just be updated. So zero new products were brought in, and 594 products were updated. So now the quantity of those products you know, should show as being updated here. We can also take a look at the CSV importer and see how we could reuse that same map again if we wanted to. So we'll go back to the CSV, and you can see the inventory update map is selected. So now if I choose a file of the same format, it has the same number of columns and everything. So I would just select that. And then with that map selected, I just say import products. And instead of opening the product mapper, it would just begin the import. So that makes it really fast to update again and again using the same map. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks. Bye.